Hello there and welcome. Glad you're joining me again today. Let me begin by asking you a question. What is the most pressing need you have right now at this moment? And there are probably all kinds of answers. In fact, there would be around the world from here to Ukraine. The, the, the answers would be different, that's for sure. But right now, what's the most pressing need for you? Maybe it has to do with relationship, perhaps uh, putting a relationship back together. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's just love. There are all kinds of answers to that, aren't there? Well, in the book of Genesis, uh, very early on, one of the most pressing needs of humankind was identified by God in the creation account. When on the sixth day, he created man or humankind. And do you remember how every time when God created, he responded with this phrase, this is good. When he created the earth, he said, this is good. When he created the seas, he looked and said, this is good. When he created plant life, animals, he always said, this is good. Then on the sixth day, he created man in his own image, and he was really on a roll, liking the human he had just created, and he said what? This is good? Kinda. When he looked at humankind, when he looked at man, he said, this is very good. Ah, but something happened after Genesis 1. Because in Genesis 2, God looked at that same man he had just said was very good, and God saw something that disturbed him. In fact, it so disturbed him that, um, that he said this. Instead of saying, this is good or this is very good, God said, this is not good. And do you remember what it was that was not good? It was that man was alone, right? Well, guess what? It is still not good for God's creation for us to be alone. And I would say to you that one of the most effective and lasting ways to love and encourage those you do life with, as well as to reach out to those around you who have yet to discover God, is by relating to them in such a way that they know they are not alone on their journey. Hey, I'm with you. I'm here for you. I care. You can count on me kind of a thing. Now, last week I talked about the miracle in Mark 2 of the paralyzed man who was brought to Jesus by his four friends. Were you with me then? And we talked about how Jesus not only healed that man physically, but he also healed him from his fears, from his failures, and challenged him in his faith. Well, today I want to continue um, thinking of that incredible miracle Jesus performed Uh, in the New Testament with the paralyzed man. But I want to think of it more from the perspective of those four selfless men who brought their friend to Jesus. By the way, I call them care enough friends because they cared enough to get out of their comfort zone. Think about it. They cared enough to place their own personal needs aside. And they cared enough to do whatever it took to meet the need of their paralyzed friend. So, the question for us today is this. How can we, too, become care enough friends to those we do life with? Because, listen, what I give out, I get back in return, Luke 6.38 says. So, if I can be a care enough friend to others, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have care enough friends in my own life. Well, first of all, consider this. Care enough friends who desire for their friends to be healed and whole will always hurt with them. The idea of empathy. You see, oftentimes the greatest miracles begin with compassion, don't they? And many times Jesus, we're told just before He heals someone, He looks at their dilemma and moved with compassion, He responded. And no doubt these four men cared deeply for this friend of theirs. Um, I'm convinced they had shed many a tear in His behalf and, and they were broken hearted over His condition all those years. By the way, could I just say that a surefire way to know if you really care for someone is this. Do you actually notice their needs? Do you actually notice their pain? Because you cannot truly care and hurt for another unless you do. Think about your own life. You've got worries, right? Problems, challenges, difficulties to face. Sure, all of us do. And if you're like most people, you're facing those things pretty much on your own. I mean, you're carrying these things on your shoulders, keeping your cares to yourself. Don't want to share. Wouldn't it be nice if there were someone in your life 
who was aware of what you were going through, someone who could come to you and say, I'm so sorry, I'm here for you, I care. Man, I think that would be great for all of us. But think about this. Those around you and some very close to you are in the same boat. And listen, you can be that someone in their life. You can be that friend. When Sam Rayburn was Speaker of the House way back in the 40s and 50s, uh, he was quite a well-known figure in our, in, our, uh, in our country and in our politics. He learned one morning uh, that a teenage daughter of a close friend of his had died suddenly during the night. So immediately, he left his house and went to his friend's house. And when the man came to the door, Rayburn said to him, I just came by to see what I could do to help you. Well, this grief-stricken father uh, replied to, to Rayburn, I, I don't think there's anything you can do, Mr. Speaker. We're making all the arrangements now. Rayburn asked, well, have you had your coffee this morning? His friend answered he had not taken time for breakfast. So Speaker Rayburn just walked through the door right past him and began to make coffee in the kitchen. While he was working away, the man came in and said to him, Mr. Speaker, I, I thought you were supposed to be having breakfast at the White House this morning. And Rayburn responded, well, I was. But I called the president and told him I had a friend in trouble this morning and I just couldn't come. Now, how many of you know that is the kind of friend God would challenge each of us to be? That is a care enough friend. Would you agree? And listen, I, I won't kid you, this type of loving and caring for those who are hurting requires a pretty significant level of commitment on your part. Uh, I, won't, I won't kid you. It will require, require an unconditional love that says, regardless of why you hurt, even if it's your fault, I'm going to love you. Solomon said in Proverbs 17, a friend loves at all times. He's born to walk through bad times. What an incredible gift to have someone in my life who will walk through whatever with me without giving up on me. Because listen, people around us, even those we are in relationship with, sometimes do some pretty dumb stuff. Look at someone right now and say, he's talking about you. Maybe, maybe so, but probably about all of us. And I mean the kind of dumb stuff that results in heartache, that, that ultimately results in pain. Because at that moment, more than any other, they will need someone to be there for them. In Job chapter 6, it says, A despairing man should have the devotion of his friends, even though he forsakes the fear of Almighty God. Even if a person turns their back on God, a, a care enough friend would be there, just like Jesus would be there, ministering to their needs. Okay, care enough friends who want to see their friends and family made whole will, number one, hurt with them, and secondly, will encourage them. Can you imagine the encouragement this paralyzed man felt when his friends explained what they were going to do for him? And can't you just imagine their words to him as they trekked along that dusty road to get to where Jesus was teaching that day? Hey, it won't be long now, friend. We're almost there. Hang in there. Uh, this is going to be amazing. Jesus loves you. You'll see. So do we. This is going to be the greatest day of your life. Don't worry about a thing. We're, we're here for you. We got you. That's what people who care do, isn't it? They offer encouragement and support to one another. One time Henry Ford was having lunch with a man when suddenly he asked him, who's your best friend? The man replied by starting to name certain people. And, and Ford interrupted him and said, no, no, I'll tell you who your best friend is. Your best friend is the one who brings out the best in you. Now, isn't that just so true? You know what happens when a boxer goes to his corner between rounds, right? His team gathers around him and, or her, dressing their wounds, keeping their muscles loose, and offering encouragement. Sometimes they have a mic up there so that you can hear the encouragement going, going from the, the team into that fighter. You can do this. You can win this fight. Keep your guard up. You got this. You can do it. Even when that fighter is getting pummeled, they're offering that encouragement. So listen. Every person needs one or two people in their corner encouraging them to stay in the fight. And especially when they're getting pounded by their circumstances. So here's the question. Are you a corner man? Are you a corner woman for someone else who's fighting the trials and troubles of life? You see, there are at least one or two or three people, I would guess, in your life 
with whom you have special influence right now, such that your words carry more weight with them than maybe anyone else. Listen, don't be stingy with those words. Use your words generously. Be their encourager. Years ago, Pepper Rogers, the head football coach at UCLA at the time, was going through a really terrible season, and he was upset with everyone. In fact, when he went home, he got upset with his wife because he didn't think she was being a friend, a friend to him and, and encouraging him enough. Her response was, hey, your dog's your friend, and he encourages, encourages you. And Pepper responded, yes, but a man needs at least two friends. She said, well, go out and buy you another dog then. <laughs> I guess that's one way to do it. But listen, don't make your friends go out and buy another dog. Give them encouragement and support when they need it. Because we all need to be built up and made to feel like we have worth and are somebody. Especially during those seasons where we feel like no more than a nobody. And here's a little secret. If you want to have more friends, care enough friends, than you will ever need, here's all you have to do. Ready? Ready? Here it is. Just make every person in your life feel like a somebody. Make them feel important and special, like they matter, because they do. Listen, do that for others, and they will be your care enough friends for life. Like this paralyzed man, how important and how special do you think he felt as he was carried by his friends and encouraged by them uh, all the way? How much of a somebody... Did he feel like? You see, too many people in the world drag you down, don't they? And you know who I'm talking about in your life. They drag you down instead of build you up. Stay away from those folks. Uh, you can love them from afar. You don't have to spend every moment with them. Stay away from them and determine to spend time with Proverbs 27 type people. Verse 17 says, like iron sharpens iron, so will one person sharpen another. Spend time with those who sharpen you, who build you up, rather than those who dull you and beat you down. <laughs> like the very friendly sheepdog I read about that was dropped off at a kennel. And they put an advertisement out on their webpage that said, Found, beautiful and extremely friendly sheepdog. Answers to the name of Down Boy. <laughs> hey, if someone in your life makes you feel continually like your name is down boy, you should have trouble being any, in any kind of relationship long term with that person, right? And, and, as long as I make others feel like down boy, they most likely will have trouble being friends with me. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a true friend is someone who makes us do what we can do. In other words, someone who brings out the best in us. Someone who takes what's lying dormant in us and brings it to fruition. Someone who builds us up. Someone who encourages us. All right. So care enough friends who want wholeness and healing for others will hurt with them, encourage them, and last will show them Jesus. This paralyzed man was helpless and hopeless. No doctor could cure him. No hospital could treat him. But his friends knew that if they could just get him into the presence of Jesus, everything would be all right. Now listen, the best friend a person can have is a friend that will take him or her into the presence of Jesus. Because believe it or not, Jesus is not only our Savior, He's our friend. In fact, Jesus said as much in John 15 when He said, I have called you friends. How cool is that? I, mean, I can have intimate friendships with another person, and I can have intimate friendship with my Savior, with Jesus. Then, to top it all off, I can help others around me to have that very same thing. Are you familiar, some of you may be not old enough to know this song, but others of you would be familiar with the Paul Simon song, I Am a Rock. You remember that song? About a recluse trying to lock himself away from the world? Let me read just a few of the lyrics to you. Well, I know them. I've sung the song so many times this past week. A winter's day in a deep and dark December. I am alone, gazing from my window to the streets below on a freshly fallen silent shroud of snow. I am a rock. I am an island. He goes on in the next verse and says, I've built walls 
fortress deep and mighty that none may penetrate. I have no need of friendship. Friendship causes pain. It's laughter and it's loving I disdain. I am a rock. I am an island. Doesn't it break your heart that there are so many people who live each day just like that, as a rock and an island, never experiencing friendships with God or another person, real friendships, and never conquering their horrible aloneness. Listen, be sensitive to this week, will you? Be sensitive this week to those who may have a need for a friend. And I mean a friend just like you. A friend that will love them unconditionally. And a friend who will lead them into the presence of Jesus. And by the way, if you are the one, if you're saying, wait a minute, Pastor, it's hard for me to do that because that's me. I, I'm the rock. I'm the, I'm the island. I'm that recluse. If that's you, just remember this. Jesus, the Son of the living God, not only loves you, but in every instance of your life will be your care enough friend. Trust Him. Baby steps, but trust Him and you'll see. Father, today I pray for every person watching. I pray for those of us who need to be better about being care enough friends to our family and those around us. And I pray for those who, uh, who just don't have that friend, who don't have a care enough person in their life. Would you begin to raise people up in their behalf? And would you begin to challenge all of our faith to take a stand and to, and to reach out first to other people? You promise us that if we, whatever we give, we get back in return. So help us find opportunities this week. Even those of us who are afraid and reclusive, help us to have this courage and strength to just make that friendship, to just make that connection, giving, knowing that in turn you will give back to us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining me again. Hopefully, God willing, we'll be back next week. I'll be praying for you. If I can pray specifically for you, hit me up with an email on my website, newdaychurchbrandon.org, or just PM me on social media. I'll be happy to pray for you or help you with anything, answer questions, whatever you might need. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye-bye.